You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Bettany Rowe and Mickey Taylor. And then as I was leaving the shop, the security guard said I wasn't supposed to stick it up, Matt. Welcome <laughs> to Chewing the Cud. This week we are welcoming guest host Mickey Taylor. Hi, Mickey. Hey, babe, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm not too bad. It's early, but I'm ready. Let's get this going. I'm ready. I'm rearing. It's a at night. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you brought for us this week? Uh, this week I'm bringing a story about Destiny's grandchildren. Oh. On screen now you can see all the ways of getting in touch with us. We are at The Could TV on social media where you can follow us, thecud.tv for our website, and on YouTube or podcast services, look for Chewing the Cud and hit subscribe. And as the names of people who have reached out and touched our souls on social media go along the bottom of the screen, we go to Mike and the Buzz. <laughs> I know that you're, you're in a relationship now. Mm -hmm. But in the past, have you ever used a certain social networking application that might go bloop, bloop when you get a message? Maybe once or <laughs> twice, yes. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about Grindr. Okay. Okay. I remember her. Yeah. Um, still on it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so sad. Um, so, Grindr founder Joel Simkai uh -huh. right, has basically come out and said, it's 10 years on, I wish I didn't make it. Oh. Yeah, kind of regret it making it. Didn't he just sell it? He just sold it and said, you know what? Yeah, it's gone public it, now. It's gone public. Yeah. Um, and he's saying, you know what? It's it's toxic. It's got all these problems behind it. I really wish I hadn't made it. It what? Yeah. But what he has done is created a new one. Oh. <laughs> There's a surprise, you know. Um, and this one's called Motto. So it's just Grindr 2.0 then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he should have just done a software update. It would have been a lot quicker. <laughs> yeah, so it's like when you're being toxic, ban, ban. Yeah, just fix it, just change it yeah. up. So create a new app called Motto, mm -hmm. okay, which he said is going to have no, not the toxicity behind it. Mm -hmm. Right, you're going to have to have a face picture. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, so it's not just all. He's just said headless torsos. Well, you yeah. can do, you can do full on nude now on, on Grinder. Can you? Yeah, yeah, you can have you out and. I remember when you could literally just have like, it had to be like this up. Up from the belly button. Yeah. yeah. And then you couldn't have your underwear in it. You couldn't nope. have any form of bulge or like even a sexualization. I think if you so much as cupped a boob, you were going to get shut Eating down. Eating a banana. No. Could you not? No. That's hilarious. I, I was deep throating a banana, so it's, I wasn't like yeah. that. I wasn't really you were in the demographic yeah, for banning on that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, the amount of times I've had fake accounts set up on there and then like people have gone to me, you just robbed me of £150 of PayPal. I'm like, it wasn't me. <laughs> and, so that works for me. Like, yeah, it's yeah. doing me a favour. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you see, I always thought that the fake accounts would just you turn up and go, oh, disappointed. Well, you get all kinds. You get the ones where it's like, click and watch me live on camera or turn up ones. to my house. So you're either going to get robbed or gay bashed. So oh, OK. <laughs> Much safer now, I think, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> um, but yeah, it's got community guidelines. Um, it's got a lot more, so like looking after people and people oh, saying things like no fats, no femmes, no Asians yeah. are being booted. Oh, thank God. So it's doing a lot more, which is, which is good. Less Confederate flags on this one. I'm excited. Yeah, so they've not said that. They've just said that they want to come up with people. They might keep the flags. <laughs> oh, you've heard it here. <laughs> not said anything about the Confederate flags. No. Um, but moving on, monkeypox. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, a lot of people got concerned when it first started to rear its head yes. that we've got another HIV epidemic mm -hmm. coming. Um, but the good news is that the UK's monkeypox situation is looking very positive. Well, we were quite quick. We were really on yeah. it. Yeah, especially in London. Yeah, and Manchester as well. Really? Well, I, yeah. I heard you couldn't get monkeypox for a uh, vaccination for a little while, but I know they're mm -hmm. all back in now. Like, yeah. you can get them up here and pretty exactly, much yeah. there was There was a shortage just around about end of August. Yeah, yeah. Pride weekend. Yeah. For some reason, everyone wanted monkeypox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, less than 100 new infections a week. Oh, which see, is... See, gays get it done. Exactly. Like, because, <laughs> if you think about, like, the COVID numbers, we're still getting them and they mm -hmm. still rise, they go down, yeah. they rise. Whereas, like, they were like, this one's just for the gays. We're like, we've got this. Yes. We're fine. <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah. Um, but they're also, the, the, the way they're saying that it's revolutionary because they've not just gone, oh, you're high risk. It's pretty much anybody that's on prep, there's your monkey box if you want it. Oh. Yeah, in Manchester. Um, there wasn't any filtering about you need to be this, that, the other. It's like, are you on prep? Yeah, go and get it. Oh, wow. That was one of the... the passes sort of thing, oh. um, which I thought was a really good way of working it because... Yeah, I think that's brilliant. I went to get my, my three-monthly prep and he went, oh, yeah, do you want the monkeypox as well? Yeah, Why are you in? Yeah. Does it hurt? 
It's a vaccine. Yeah, we, we always get the big needle ones. Like, everyone's had to have an <laughs> antibiotic shot once or twice in their life in their butt, and that's a big-ass needle. <laughs> so like, did it hurt? I was fine with that one. Oh, God, no, that hurts. Yeah, not okay with tattoos. Tattoos, screaming pain. No, I hate them. I'm yeah. never getting one. No, don't no, get them. I'm against. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just sharpie. People think it's tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> I literally, it's hardcore biroing. It's a hobby. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the same, we're not out of the woods yet. Yeah. Still got work to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the good news is that they are they're offering it out to more and more people. Oh, good. So if you're offered it, take it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just like... <laughs> um, but that brings us... <laughs> it's true. Um, and if you've got a picture like that you want to share with us, you can at the Could TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. How do you feel about pizza? Uh, love it at home. Hate buying it. Hate oh. buying it. Yeah, no takeaway. Don't waste your money. 30 quid on a pizza makes no sense. Three, four pounds at Morrison's. Champion. Like, but, that, but then you've got to cook it yourself as well. Don't order anything that you would be able to cook at home. You can okay. cook pizza at home. It is bread. It is sauce. It is cheese. Put them on top. It's a frigging hot sandwich. You're fine. <laughs> Don't waste 30, 40 pounds on it's pizza. It's a frigging hot sandwich. Go to Asda or Morrison's for a couple of quid. Save yourself. Buy a Chinese. It'll be nice. <laughs> you can cook a Chinese at home, too. Yeah, but like that's a lot of ingredients. You can throw, you can bish bash a pizza. You can't bish bash a Chinese. You've got to do it right. You can still bish bash a Chinese. Okay, well, I'm slow. Okay. <laughs> That's different. That's a you issue. <laughs> yeah, that's a me issue. <laughs> well, good news for you then, mm -hmm. because um, a pizza topping has come back. Um, well, it's not pineapple. Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm pro that's pineapple fine. on the pizza. Is it like anchovies or something? I like anchovies as well. What's wrong? You like all the things that don't go on pizza. Anchovies, pineapple, lovely on pizza, no. as is banana. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What's not that? happening? Tasty, good man. It's fruit. It's a sip. Okay. So is tomato. This will be an make... hour separate. <laughs> <laughs> right, so tomato is a fruit. Yeah. The sauce is made of tomato. Yeah. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> you Fine. can put fruit on a pizza. <laughs> Fine. So, yes, pineapple lovers of the world, we've won. Yes. Um, so, yes. Um, well, this is a Heinz pizza. Looking at me weird. Okay. Yeah, they're bringing back Heinz baked bean pizza. No. No. What do you mean, no? No, I don't like beans either. I draw the line. No. What? No. How can you not like... What's wrong with pepperoni and mushroom and just some red things. onion and that and that? Love... What's Damn. wrong with beans? They're already in the tomato <sighs> sauce. <sighs> no, I, n I have no valid reason to hate it, but I know I do in my soul. Okay, that's okay. You can be prejudiced towards Deep pizza. Deep down, this is wrong. <laughs> I can't explain it, but I'm sure Gordon Ramsay will tell you it's terrible. <laughs> I had listened to Gordon Ramsay. Now, we had a Nigella giving us an opinion. Yeah, she can't even say microwave, right? Should we listen? <laughs> yes, we should. should because like, microwave. Drop is... buckered beans on the pizza. Like, it's not going to... <laughs> you won't even know what you're cooking. <laughs> Why not? But you can get this from supermarkets. You'd have to order it in. Oh, if it hits the criteria that you can buy it at the supermarket, so there's a visual as well. Yeah. No, that's a tasty, hard. Man. No. Mm -mm. Look all yeah. those orange radars saying, "Don't eat me." There's a green <laughs> one there. <laughs> Fibre green. <laughs> oh goodness! Like oh, yeah. I know people love baked beans. I've just never been one of those human beings. Like no. Nah. I know they go in like chili con carne sometimes and stuff like that, and then they're edible. But okay. then, so, no, yeah. So you're, you're pro bean in a situation, just yeah. not in all situations. Yeah, if the situation calls for a bean, then I will have it. But I see no reason to pour <laughs> a tin onto a pizza. It's not happening. <laughs> not poured a tin, just some beans. It's not a full bit, it's not a full big tin. We could unpack this, yeah. but I will. Turn this place up <laughs> in rage. It's not happening. Okay. Um, so beans in the sense, so chili, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wheat bix? No. Okay. Why are you putting wheat bix on the pizza? No, on beans. Oh, uh, okay. On beans. Yeah. What the f is wrong with you? <laughs> it's brown bread. It literally says like on all the ads with milk. Like it tells you what to do. That's a serving suggestion. 
Oh, well, I suggest you listen. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> why are you putting baked beans? With... Oh, it's, that must be so dry. So dry. No, because there's a lot of bean juice with beans. So... <laughs> Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, I would rather have the Pope in his hands and clap in my face than okay. eat that. No, it's so <laughs> gross. Like, Pope, if you're listening, game on. But like, I am not eating Weetabix with baked beans. It's just not. No, it's a non-issue. <laughs> just a nice bowl full of... Just two Weetabix, your, bowl of beans. Your comment section on just this section is going to create covered, war. I discovered it on this show. There's a whole thing, like April time. Heinz released it as a, as a um, April Fool's kind of thing, uh -huh. right? And I went, oh, let's try it. And I fell in love with it. You're a different kind of person. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I couldn't do it. No, it's somewhere, I, I don't know where, but it's homophobic what you're doing. <laughs> somewhere in this structure, okay. is, it, there's a homophobia layer. Well, I don't think it's fair. I'm fine, I'm just saying. Um, but that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for that topic. Pleasure as always. But next we have Mickey and the showbiz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud. Now let's get ready for the showbiz with Mickey. Thank you, Mike. And today I have three stories for you. Let's start with, have you ever lost anything? Dignity. How about an entire piece of art from the 50s? I once lost some... No, that wasn't. <laughs> That's fine. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. this week the BBC announced that there was a 1950s radio work that is going to be hitting the stage in Salford. Oh. Oh, that's that's right. The first homosexual will take place at the new Adelphi studio in Salford on the 1st of December. Nice. Uh-huh. Um, I've not really had much chance to review it. However, it does have a wonderful cast. We have the incredible director of Stephen M. Hornby. Do you know his work? I I'm aware of his work, yeah. He's done a lot of work. Yeah. Fabulous. And we have the wonderful Jordan Tweddle that will be acting. Twiddle? Twiddle. Twiddle. Actual name? Twiddle Twiddle, yes. Ah, now he's pretty. Yes. Oh, yes. He's very pretty. We might be going to see him. The long hair is back, isn't it? I, I'm not that you know, surprisingly. No. Not that. Not that into the the long hair. A couple of months, you can grow it. <laughs> in areas. I mean, my back hair. Yes, one hundred percent. Personally, not the stuff that's on top of my head. How are you with your plays, your musicals? I do like a musical. Yes. What yeah. was the last one? See, but unfortunately, the, the world kind of closed down to stop me going yeah. to any. So the last one I actually went to see was um, Les Mis. I've still not seen it. You've seen it? I'm what? terrible. I I've know. not seen Les Mis. There was a weird blip in my life where I didn't get a chance to see anything, unless it was like on the TV version where they filmed it. So okay. like I got to see Hamilton. Okay, um, I've not seen Hamilton. It's good. I've heard that's good, but it's not. Uh... Oh my God. Like I don't really enjoy Lynn morell Miranda as a person. Mm -hmm. I think he's everywhere. And that's annoying. <laughs> but... <laughs> How dare you have more fame than me? I Go away. <laughs> but I do love what he can do. Yeah. Like he is a wonderful artist, and oh, he is very clever. But yeah, get off my TV, please. Uh, <laughs> the last thing I saw was uh, the Book of Mormon. Actually, how did you feel about the Book of Mormon? I loved it. See, I, a couple of people found it a bit problematic. Good. No, no. I, I think that's the point, though. It's supposed to challenge, like, a couple of things, mm. especially, like, what we consider some of the stereotypes of Mormonism mm. and, like, kind of mock some of it, but also educate at the same time. And obviously it's going to be a satirical piece. It's done by the people that did South Park, so... Yeah, that's true. It's going to be an absolute, like, offensive hootenanny. <laughs> an so, offensive hootenanny. <laughs> an offensive hootenanny. That's going to be what it says on the four-star review. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so this work that's coming out the first the first homosexual, mm -hmm. yeah, um, first December. Yes, first of December. World AIDS Salford. Day as well. And it is at let me make sure for you the Adelphi Studio, so you can get your tickets now. Oh, nice. Yes, 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 yes. Are you so. watching anything else at the moment musically? There's some good musical films out this time of year. Really? They what? I watched, well, it was, well, it was okay, but it was... Called, <laughs> Some good, okay, average, I'll do <laughs> it. It was called Spirited. It had Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds, and it's a redo of Scrooge. Okay. But 
it's more like I won't give it away. I'm not a Will Ferrell fan. You know what? This was really good. However, the last 20 minutes were unnecessary and there's four songs too many. I, and it's Will Ferrell's too... One Will Ferrell for me is too many. Really? What did he do? What did he do to hurt you? Um, he did that Elf movie. Elf is good. I'm not taking any kind of opinion from someone that has wheat to bix and baked beans for lunch. Breakfast. So... <laughs> Breakfast. <laughs> Bre even less travel <laughs> class. <laughs> Moving on to our next story. Okay. Do you know anything about the new Kelly Rowland and Little Mix deboc debacle? Debacle? Debacle. Um, has she slapped them? No. Has she slept with them? No. Did she use one as a glove puppet? No, and you could have made that so much easier on yourself. It's right here. Um, <laughs> I'm old and blind. I can't reach that far away. <laughs> uh, turns out that the wonderful Kelly Rowland mm -hmm. might be the one that we have to thank for Little Mix in the first place. Oh. Yes, a clip has come out from X Factor showing that Little Mix was formed. You know when they used to do the tables of who they were going to put into the yeah, yeah. guest houses, judge houses? Judges houses. Judges houses. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is a scene in which they're trying to put bands together because, you know, what's better than forcing people to work together under extreme <laughs> circumstances? Uh, for money. <laughs> for money. Um, oh, yeah. You can see Kelly Rowland piecing the girls into one, one unison. Oh. Yeah. So I think that kind of checks out for me because obviously came from a band herself. Mm -hmm. I remember when she did her seasons, I think she did one or two, I can't remember, but she was always very harmony heavy, mm -hmm. and very like strong. She'd make them all kind of check themselves before they wrecked themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, it makes sense for her to do it. It wasn't gonna be Simon or Louie, was it? Oh no, but, right. oh, look at the hair. Oh, the hair. Oh no. I know Jesse has fallen off of the wagon for various reasons, but the hair must have been a sim like a sign from the get-go. My goodness. I, Perry's not got much control over it. Mm. Well, who am I judging? Choices. <laughs> <laughs> but so, no. so that makes them gra Destiny's grandchildren then? Destiny's grandchildren, I suppose, yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. I mean, they're still going when you think of the grand scheme of X Factor and all the people that have been on it. How many can you actually remember now besides Olly Murs and them from the British one, really? Even Leona Lewis has vanished. Um, Stacey Solomon. Oh my God. 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 She was always. <laughs> yeah, but that's all you remember of her, though. I can't oh, yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell you if she could sing or not on this show. Mm. She could hold a tune. I wouldn't say. So. Do you want to know something quite funny about one of them, actually? Go on. So I was going to a Dua Lipa gig in mm -hmm. Manchester. And next door was Honey G's gig. Okay. And outside Dua Lipa's got thousands of people. Mm -hmm. It's like waiting to queue up. Honey G's must have had about five. Five? Five. Wow, that's a lot more and than I was then, expecting. Yes. like, Dua Lipa arrives really understated, like, gets out of her coach, waves, says hi, walks in. Honey G turns up in a Lamborghini <laughs> with, like, press that she's clearly paid to be there and stands there for 30 minutes outside her own gig just posing with a car. Okay. And then, like... There was people at her gig that left it to come and join ours. Like, she's very talented. <laughs> <laughs> well, choices were made. <laughs> choices were definitely made. But then the, the tickets would have been cheaper. This is true. So yeah, if you're on yeah. a budget... Yeah. She might be a good one for the kids. Maybe it's kids that like her. <laughs> in the Lamborghini. <laughs> daddy, daddy, daddy buy me a Lamborghini. Myself, like, stop putting these jokes, because like, you know they put a joke person in every year. Yes. We know they do it. But I think to myself, all you're doing is like giving that person ample chances to be bullied. Because mm -hmm. like, none of them go off and do great things. So for just three months of their lives, they're just berated on well, telly. You see, you say that, Rylan. Yeah. Rylan's done very well not being able to sing. But he was a really good TV personality though, wasn't he? Like yeah. he was always like, he was like OG meme time where yeah. people were becoming <laughs> memes organically rather than like forced or something. Like he was one that instantly you remember him like falling off that chair going <laughs> like, it's, it's iconic. And now everyone remembers him for his teeth because they can be seen through space. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Ever power blackout, right, well, gives a smile. Exactly, he'll be, yeah. he might even, it could be solar panel. We could be. He could be charging his phone every time he cleans. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Moving on to our next story. This one is an interesting one, let's say. <laughs> but do you know the match? Do you know the match? I'm aware of Madonna's work with yeah. the voguing and the holiday, and the, well, I'm picking my way. era rather than the, the more recent stuff. Controversially, mm. people might be grateful to hear less of her work at the moment. Okay. As it appears <laughs> that the woman of 64 will not get off Instagram or TikTok. Correct, she won't. She won't leave. <laughs> she won't. She's she like, won't going, mine now. I like it here. And it, she's now getting bullied. That's bullied. That's a shame. Yeah. yeah. Is it? No, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> I, just say, I mean, yeah, stop bullying, bullying her, bothering her yeah. um, for enjoying life 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but she doesn't need to share it where she shares it. Like, I'm not saying she can't be a dirty whore. We can all be dirty whores. Yeah. I did it once or twice in my younger years. But you, like, ah, for you me... this morning. <laughs> <laughs> for me, getting on TV and eating out of dog bowls and what? exposing... Oh, yeah. Oh, it's full on. Yeah. Doggy style, you may say. Now, don't get me wrong. Like, I think you should be able to do whatever you want online. I do my per self personally have issues with like nudity, like in general. But I think when you're doing this and you have a certain like image about yourself and a certain role in society and in your own family dynamic, are you setting good examples for other people? I mean, it depends on why she's doing it. Yes. If it's if an she's... art piece, then you can be like, okay, pop off. If you're a grandmother, maybe reconsider eating out of the dog bowl and join everyone else at the dinner table. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the showbiz news. Thanks for that, Mickey. I'm going to not eat out of my dog's bowl, honestly. <laughs> but stick around, because coming up next, we have our game of the week. You're watching Chew in the Cud. This week we're going to play Lazy Susan's Question Roulette. And this one is for our most favouritest Mickey ever. Cut off your pop. <laughs> right. I'm going. Game of the Week. So Mickey's going to spin the Lazy Susan and then ask me a question to see if I can get it right, because we know I'm not that clever. Are you ready, Mickey? I am. I'm, I'm never been so nervous about reading small sentences in my life. Cool. Do you want to give it a spin then and see what happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So what's the category? Oh. <laughs> Culture. <laughs> Culture. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Who wrote The Strange Case of Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde? Oh, it was an old person. Well, not old, old, but old as in a long time ago. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Enid Blyton. It's not even close. It was uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. No, 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 no. Stevenson did the, the first train. He did the rocket. No, no, no. He did this too. It's on the card. <laughs> 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 like the cards know all. Have you never been done, done, done tarot? My oh, goodness. Yeah, it, it said I was going to be successful and handsome. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> I won't say anything. I'm going to behave. Shh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> David Bowie adopted this name to avoid confusion with which other musician? Who had the same surname as Bowie? Feather. Feather Boa. I don't think you know how this game works, but I'm... I don't know how it works. <laughs> I don't think you realise how thick I am. You invited me. I learnt the rules ten seconds ago. Oh, no, I know the rules. <laughs> I don't know what's on the cards. That's the difference. Davy Jones. Oh, is Davy Jones similar yeah. to Davy? Because his name is Davy Bo David Bowie. So it would have been David Jones and Davy Jones. Not Feather Bowie. Oh, that's close. That's all <laughs> confusing. Who, who else is called Feather? Lots of drag queens. Lots Probably one of Angelina Jolie's children, to be fair. But... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Feather okay. and sunshine. Oh. Got enough music. Right? Oh, a musical question. I'm normally very good at these. You got the last one wrong, love. <laughs> <laughs> Which rock star was the first to be arrested on stage? Come on. 
The one with the lips. What's his name? I used to know it's in Oh. Ozzy Osbourne. No! What? Jim Morrison. Who's he? The founder of Morrison's was a rock star. Ready? Mm -hmm. Please get this one right. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm braced. What's, what's the category? Science. Mm -hmm. You're not good at any of them so far. No, <laughs> oh, no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, a jiffy is a real scientific measurement of time. How long is it, though? I actually didn't know this. This is actually cool. It's something like three minutes. No, not even close. Seven minutes. Far less. Three seconds. Less. One second. Less. Half a second. Less. Four frames. It's a hundredth of a second. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's it. Is there one that you would like me to fake spin and rig for you to try and get you a good one? You, you could try any of them because this, this, I'm not clever. Okay. <laughs> Let's go here. Let's try culture again. Okay. This is your chance to redeem yourself <laughs> and prove the world you are cultured. I do have culture. I haven't put it in a petri dish and chested. I don't think you're going to get this one, but... Okay. So. <laughs> Where are the Dolomites? I've had them removed. <laughs> They're in Italy. I think they're in hospital waste, to be fair, but okay. You're rubbish! <laughs> you're rubbish! <laughs> you put these... <laughs> this makes no sense to me how you're getting them all wrong! <laughs> you brought me here! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write the cards. If I wrote the cards, I'd expect to get them all right. I'll bloody get one right! <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. You, you, you answer one without looking at the back. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. Okay. Oh, wait. Let me spin because I deserve a spin too. Yeah, okay. Okay. Hopefully the answer doesn't come out right away. The SXSW Festival is held yearly in which state? I'm pretty sure it's California. Don't cast it. Uh, it could be. I'm pretty sure it's California. Okay. Uh, it's Texas. See, it's not that easy, is it? Yeah, at least mine was near an answer that's right. It missed a three a minutes for a hundredth of a second. But as you pick the card out, bad so math and <laughs> <laughs> Right. Let me pick another one for you. Please get this one right. We're all counting on you. Okay. This is why I think electrolysis while answering them would really give you the motivation you <laughs> I need. would just be very, very electrocuted. See, okay, this one is pretty easy. Okay. Which artist hold the record for the most Grammy Awards ever won? Beyonce. No, it's not. I'll let you have one more guess. But they are, they are a person of colour, if that helps. And they are in the pop world. And one could deem them as royal as well. Like people call Queen B. This person is considered pop royalty too. Can't make this any easier. Wait, Houston? That wasn't a bad guess. Mm. She wasn't dead. She'd be releasing hits still. True, true. But I think, did she ever get one? I don't know. I thought she got know. a couple. It was Michael Jackson. Uh, King of Pop. Not Queen of Pop, which way I was going. Yeah, so I said this person was considered the king, and you still went with Whitney. Okay. How many more of these have I got to do? <laughs> I'm sick of getting at I'm so cheating. I'm just picking whichever ones, like, look good to me. Okay. Oh, we did that one. Okay. Well, again, I'll get it right. 
If you dipped your fingers into liquid nitrogen, what would happen to them? Please, this one is so easy. Is that a loop? Can I walk off? Can I, <laughs> can I go? I think what would happen if you dipped your fingers into liquid nitrogen? They'd freeze? Yes, and you'd die. <laughs> Snap off. Why would you die from finger freezer burn? Put your fingers in it, it's like, ah, oh, heart attack, dead. How did he die? Oh, his pinky froze. Oh, yeah, it seems legit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, not, not that obscure. <gasps> you dip your head in liquid nitrogen, you'll die. I've just never stuck my hand in, in anything and just thought I could die from this. You'd never do Like, I head. don't stick my hand in, like, <laughs> the washing and then go, oh, God, I might drown. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. And it does sometimes. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm meant to spin. I'm just picking them now. You're just right. picking them anyway. <laughs> yeah. Who needs a spin? Henry I had the most illegitimate children of any British king of history. How many did he have? 13. It's, it's a pretty high number. 13 is a pretty high number. Not for royals. There's probably so many that we don't know about. I'm going to say 100. Far less. Like, so that's like between Nick 13 Cannon and numbers. Is that his name? Nick Cannon? Yeah, that is. <laughs> um, 28. Close. 21. Oh, okay. That's considered right then, surely. Well, I mean, like... It's within seven. I suppose you could that have that many back then. I'm going to, well, I think we should go fund me and get you back in school, babe. <laughs> um, anyway, um, coming up next, after the break, we have our spotlight section. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now we'll find more about him and his life as we shine a spotlight in Mickey Taylor and, well, spotlight. It's a good name, that. <laughs> So have you enjoyed yourself? You know what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the rage that I've just in, in, in created. Oh, it's not, it's not my fault you're dim. No, <laughs> it's not my fault It's your mother's. It's not my fault. I can't, I can't blame anybody but my brain. Um, but I'll happily berate you while you get things wrong, so it's fine. It's <laughs> like something I'm mother. very good at. Like <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, know, I know who you are. Yes. People in the TV world may not. Yes. Tell us about you. Ooh, well, I don't know. That's a weird one to describe because I've not had to describe myself in a very long time. Because the last time I described myself on anything, it was a lot more X-rated and now I've retired. Oh. Are you uh, retired from spicy accountancy, I believe they call it. Yes, yeah. spicy accountancy. Yeah. Yes, or if you're most people I know, spicy tax evasion. Is the, <laughs> <laughs> is the one most of them are doing. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. No, yeah, I obviously retired from the sex industry and, of course, still doing my music. It's something that will never change. I love that. Like, it's both my diary and my therapy and therapy for others, hopefully. So I will I'll always keep doing that. But Another album's come out, hasn't it? It did, yes. I dropped an album... August, I'm gonna say. Oh. I think it was August or September. I could be wrong. I've dropped a couple <laughs> of singles since then, so it's like okay. trying to figure out the blip of when it came out because it was so fast. Like mm. I remember like spending two years building it and then did nothing while my like body was healing. I got really sick for a while and I couldn't like sing or do much. And then I had to wait for that to all be done. And then I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. This sucks. <laughs> uh -huh. And then, like, my partner, who now owns an events company, was like, go on, come and do one for me. Come and do a number at a Pride gig. And I was like, mm, I'll do three. <laughs> 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 and then, like, it, it gave me my confidence back. And now I've got gigs coming out my ears again, which Good. is fun. But, yeah, yes. I, I think I needed that year away mm. from everything and then let everyone forget about all the risque stuff I used to do. So that kind of let all the artistic stuff I do be more serious. Uh, and how would you describe your music? 
Uh, someone called it dream pop once because they're like, nice. it's not pop, but it's got that weird, like, weird, trancey, mm -hmm. dreamy thing underneath it. And I was like, okay, that works. But for me, I just think I write miserable lyrics to happy tempos. Okay. It's the only way I can describe <laughs> it. <laughs> like, if you want to hear about someone's miserable time with drugs and relationships, but have an upbeat to it, I'm your guy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, it's very reflective of, of everybody's life, so that's why yeah. people get into it. So. And I mean, like, I wrote some of these songs during the pandemic, so a lot of it, like, I remember I have one song called Weirdo, La La La, and the entire song is just, like, about existential crisis. Okay. And it's just me going, we could all die at any point. Are we not bothered by this? And then the <laughs> chorus is just like, la, 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 la. <laughs> but I don't know what's wrong with me sometimes when I think about these things. I'm just like, today we're going to talk about something really dark and like probably will scar most people. But if I just put a nice beat to it, yeah, we're right. I mean, it, Sia does it. Look at titanium. Pure alcoholism. Wop, wop. What? Yeah, titanium's about alcoholism and drug addiction. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was a song about being an element on the periodic table. No, 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 oh. no, no, no. But yeah, like, it, it's been a tested, like, yeah, yeah. system. Every, everyone goes through that sort of trauma, so. Exactly, and I think there's so many doom and gloomers out there, and I, I think if you're going to be a doom and gloomer, at least have a really good voice to back that doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you've got to be like Adele level to doom the gloom. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not. I was going to say, Adele can only sing sad songs, though. I like to think, like, I say to people, I'm like a Poundland equivalent of if Harry Styles and Troy Sivan had a really hoary baby that came out slightly browner than they are. Then that's me. I'm just having an image <laughs> of the conception. Just bear with me a moment. Oh, goodness. Could you imagine? Who's topping in that scenario? Oh, I think they're both flipping. Nah. 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 One of them's bottoming. I won't say who, because I don't want a defamation lawsuit. Well, it's not, defam <laughs> it's not defamation if, if you say that Harry Styles is a big bottom. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. We don't know. Harry Styles, get in touch. Let us know if you're a bottom. Harry Styles. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah! Okay. Look, he's not my <laughs> usual type, but like, I'm more of, if I was to pick one direction, I'd probably go for a Zane mm. more than I would a Harry Styles. But more likely to see Harry Styles in a gay bar than I am Zane. So. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's like I see Sam Smith every now and then in gay bars. I'm just like, I do. Do you want to hear something terrible there, actually? Sure. So, recently, I'm trying to be more of a yes man because okay. I missed a bunch of gig opportunities this year and they were really big ones. Right. The first one, I got an email from HBO mm -hmm. and they were like, we'd love you to come and do a sex scene um, in a show that we're doing. And I was like, oh, okay, that, that sounds fun. Um, but no, respectfully, I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to act, I don't want one of my first roles since being a sex scene. Um, about six months later, I'm watching my friend do the exact same sex scene. It was Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm, House of the Dragon. I was just like, ah, okay, <laughs> damn it. And then recently I had an email from a company who were doing the casting call for a music video. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't mind doing a music video. This sounds like fun. They're like, we'll give you X amount of money, come down to London. Um, it spread out over a couple of days. I was like, yeah, that sounds like fun. I could do that. But I'm not paying for my own travel because mm. it's like 150 quid there. Yeah, it's not cheap. It's not happening. And then they were like, oh, okay, uh, we can't do travel. I went, that's fine. Um, thank you for thinking of me next time. And then they were like, uh, email me back. I was like, no, we really want you in it. Uh, we'll do it. Here's the NDA. And I was just like, okay, but before I sign this NDA, can you pay for the travel 100%? And then I got another one saying no. Right. And then I got another one saying yes. And I went, you know what, F it. I'm not going. I'm, I don't know what's going to happen when I get there. And then I found the casting call for it. And one of them was a friend of mine called Paddy O'Brien. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, I'll just wait and see um, what music video comes out with my friend Paddy O'Brien in it. It's Sam Smith and Kim Petras' new song, Unholy. And there's me bopping at home going, this is such a great song. And then like three weeks later, yeah. I find out I could have been in that as well. So I'm just going to start saying yes. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. Because I keep getting offered all these great things. It's like I got offered Big Brother years ago and I said mm -hmm. no. 
And now I'm just like, maybe I should actually start <laughs> nodding. <laughs> start saying yes. And just do it. it. Like, yeah. stop sitting at home playing Pokemon and <laughs> actually <laughs> go out and do the gigs I'm meant to be doing. But, you know, like, the break was good, but... Like, those were when I wasn't on a break, so I have no excuse. <laughs> but Kim Petrus and Sam Smith, I am so sorry. But it was a great video, so well done. <laughs> and just pay travel next time. Yeah, would have been better <laughs> with me in it, though. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now what we're going to do is going to go to our Jaw of Joy. OK. OK, which has got some very deep philosophical questions in. OK. OK. It was the egg before the chicken. It, it was. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it's technically always the cock that comes first. Okay, so brace yourself. Okay. If you're gonna pass it to me then, I was like, oh. <laughs> No. Would you rather no. have a photographic memory or be able to forget anything you wanted? Be able to forget anything I want. It's a very quick decision. Absolutely. Why? Because Having an identic memory, mm -hmm. there is so much stuff I would not want to see and remember. Like, there's stuff I've said now, and I'm like, I wish I didn't see that. <laughs> like, so I feel like, just for my own peace of mind, and so I can sleep better, mm -hmm. it'd be nice to knock a couple just of those to... memories out. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Anything traumatic you want to share? No! Like, <laughs> it's not because my life isn't traumatic. I mean, Woe Is Me is, will be the name of every book I ever make, I think. But, <laughs> I, like, for me, I, like, don't get me wrong, they're growth stories, aren't they? But I think there's the odd little things you see on TV that's just a little bit too visually scarring or something, and I'm like, I wish I didn't see that. Like Madonna eating from a cat bowl. I wish I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. baked bean pizzas, and, yeah, that could be deleted. That okay. could be deleted. OK, but you've not seen me eat baked beans, we'll eat a bit. I want to see you eat it as well! <laughs> <laughs> Going to send that to you. Um, OK. Next question. Would you rather be a dog or a cat? Dog. Another straight, definite dog. Yeah. What kind of dog, though? Oh, probably a Rottweiler, a Boxer, or a Alaskan Malamu. I ignore the first two, an Alaskan Malamu. Big fluffy thing. And same with Akitas. Oh, so just fluffies big, and boxers. Fluffy. Yeah, they're short haired. Well, well that's a short haired. I'm a big dog person. We okay. we used to breed dogs for like when we were kids and stuff. So there was always like twelve Rottweilers running around at any time. Cute. So. Little baby ones, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the two big ones that were like dire wolves compared to me when I was like eleven. But yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that. If people wanted to get get to listen to your music, how would they find you? Um, I'm always selling CDs out of the boot of my car in every neighbour town, or... <laughs> <laughs> Not even on cassette. <laughs> yeah, come buy my vinyls and cassettes. No, I'm, I'm always online on everything as it's Mickey Taylor, and I mean literally everything. I don't know how long it's took me to accumulate the handle <laughs> over the years, but I've got it. So yeah, it's Mickey Taylor. Oh, thank you very much. I would love to have you come back on another time. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to come back anytime. Just give me a call and I'll be there. Uh, that's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at the Cud TV. Our website is cud.tv. And of course, on YouTube and podcast, just search the word chewing the cud. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all soon. Bye.